and balance our body, how we suffer. So if we can understand this, then we can reduce that too much of attachment that we have towards our body to do bad things. To support our body, we do a lot of bad things. So we can stop all those bad things, knowing why should we commit all those bad things to support this impermanent, sorry, yes, impermanent, what you call very miserable, very ugly, very dirty, very filthy, physical body. One of the disciples of the Buddha, called Vakkali, every day come and sit down and watch the creatures of the Buddha. So the Buddha asked, what are you doing here? He said, when I look at your physical body, your features, your complexion, the serenity, I gain wonderful happiness. Then the Buddha said, Kinte vakkali vina putikayena dugandena sarire. What do you gain by watching this dirty, filthy, impermanent physical body? Nothing. You entertain your emotion. That's yes, all. You never gain any knowledge or wisdom or purity or understanding. Just entertain your emotion. The Buddha was not in favor of erecting images. They started to erect Buddha images 500 years after the Buddha. Before that they never had the Buddha image. Because people develop some sort of attachment toward the image. The Buddha knew this. He did not encourage. But some people know how to make use of the image. Concentrating and understanding great qualities, virtues, knowledge and wisdom and enlightenment by watching that figure. But not only for worshipping. That is why uh, Muslims and Christians and some others condemn us as idol worshippers. They don't like. But we are not idol worshippers. They don't know what we are doing. We can practice Buddhism without any image. But image is important to many people to concentrate and control the mind. So, then the Buddha says, Yo dhammang pasati, so mang pasati. Instead of watching this physical body, if you can understand the dhamma that I have taught, through this dharma you can see the real Buddha. The Buddha you cannot see the physical Buddha. The real Buddha you can see when the Dharma understanding of the truth realized, understood. The confidence that we gain creates the vision of the Buddha. That is not artificial. That is real Buddha. Buddha does not mean the body. Person, when he gained enlightenment, he is called Buddha. So the Buddha does not mean that body. Mahayana Buddhism says the Buddha never died. Why? Some people say Buddha is dead then gone. Why do we worship? What can he do? What can he do for us? How can he bless or save us? So, the monks could not console the public. What they have done, to develop their devotion, confidence, they have introduced about 700 years after the Buddha, 
they introduced to worship bodhisattvas. Earlier there was no such system. They introduced Sukhavati, pure land. Uh, then people accept. If they have not introduced these two things, worshipping, praying to bodhisattvas and pure land or Sukhavati, I don't think today a single Buddhist in China, Japan, Korea, Mongolia, and Tibet. They accepted Buddhism because of this. They can satisfy. Whether true or not, that is not the important thing. They can lead the Buddhist way of life in that way. So the here, what the Buddha is trying to say, don't become slaves to your physical body. Don't break your principles, qualities, virtues, precepts because of your physical body. Uh, then, too much of craving toward the physical body we can reduce to avoid the evil, immoral thing to support the body. There is a saying, Dhanang kajeyo pana angahetu Angang kajang jivitang rakhamano When the life is in danger, if doctors say, we had to amputate your leg. We agree. We agree to sacrifice the leg to protect the life or the body. After that, dhanang kajeyo panang vahit angang dhanang jivitang cha pisadda. We are willing to sacrifice our body when the life is in danger. The body is not the life. We are willing to sacrifice our life and the body to save others, to protect others, to serve others. Now then, reduce. Extraordinary craving that we had toward the body, we reduce. So we had to start step by step, not at once. Now, now we could manage to reduce too much of attachment we had toward the physical body. Or still we have craving. Craving for pleasure. We want to indulge, please, our senses to gain pleasure. Also willing to do bad things, immoral things. Now then, what do we gain in the end by indulging our senses? Nothing. Now, when people are very young, they en enjoy their life, indulge, eating, drinking, merrymaking, and doing all sort of things to please the senses. When they grow old, can they enjoy, or do they gain happiness by thinking how they enjoyed? Their life when they were young, they get frustration, disappointment. Therefore, by indulging senses, sensual pressure, in the end we never gain anything. But we have to face the bad effects. Now, craving for life. We went on reducing, reducing, reducing. Now remain only one thing. Craving for our life. I told you, life is not the body. How do we crave for our life? We like to be born in rich family, to enjoy our life, and to go to heaven and enjoy our life, and wherever we can enjoy pleasurable life, uh, craving is there for that life. We create this in our mind. Because of this craving, that life never get the chance to end mental suffering. Mental sufferings are heavier than the physical suffering. Seventy-five percent of 
sufferings 